When He Yen emerged from the bathroom, Fu Xinxing intercepted her at the door. Her expression was one of distaste as she remarked, Have you been drinking a lot today, you reek? Fu Xinxing stepped closer, his face near He Yan's, and replied, I missed you so much, Yen. So, what are we going to talk about today? Yen attempted to ignore his closeness and said, You know you just have to ask. Fu Xinxing's lips curled into a smirk as he inquired, How long do you think it will take for you to bring me down? Fu Xinxing, I don't want to hide it from you, I can't put the past behind me, I need a purpose to look forward to and to move forward step by step, Yen stated seriously, her gaze averted from him. She added, As for whether I can ever truly let go of the past, I don't know. Fu Xinxing sneered, And what if I die? Yen sarcastically mumbled, If you die, maybe I'll let it go. Fu Xinxing whispered in Yan's ear, Will you cry when I die? Yen widened her eyes and responded, I'll cry for at least three days. Upon hearing this, Fu Xinxing laughed. Observing his reaction, Yen asked, Why are you laughing? Aren't you pleased? Fu Xinxing sneered, I would be satisfied if you could at least do that. In the midst of their conversation, Fu Xinxing's phone rang. He took the call and left the bedroom while speaking. When he returned, he found Yen seated on the bed in a beautiful nightdress. He approached her, complimenting her, and Yen graciously thanked him. As they sat together on the bed, Fu Xinxing inquired, are you suddenly dressing like this to try and seduce me? Yen leaned in close to Fu Xinxing's shoulder and whispered, Yes, Mr. Fu. I'm deliberately trying to seduce you, and you're definitely going to fall for it. When Fu Xinxing attempted to get closer, Yen teasingly quipped, Go take a shower first. I hate smelly guys. Fu Xinxing immediately got up from the bed and proceeded to undress for a shower. Yen remained seated and waited for the sound of running water in the bathroom. Then, she quickly and quietly reached into his coat pocket to touch his mobile phone. She couldn't find Xiao Wu's contact information, so she dared to venture into Fu Xinxing's phone. Fu Xinxing was overconfident that nobody would dare to touch his phone, so he hadn't set a password. He Yen was nervous but maintained swift and steady movements. Upon opening his call log, she saw the name, Chen Hegua. He Yen was a bit surprised by this, but she quickly dismissed it and searched for Xiao Wu's contact in Fu Xinxing's phone. She counted the seconds silently as she called Xiao Wu. Xiao Wu answered the phone and greeted, Brother Xing, what's going on? Unexpectedly, He Yen remained calm and spoke in a low voice, I'm He Yen. Fu Xinxing is taking a shower. Xiao Wu sounded surprised, Oh, Sister Yen. Ignoring the affectation in Xiao Wu's tone, He Yen asked him coldly, Tell me, how can I dismantle this family from its roots? Xiao Wu chuckled and inquired, Sister Yen, what are you talking about? Don't be silly. You know what I mean. He Yen responded calmly. Glancing back in the direction of the bathroom, she added, Fu Xinxing will be done in about five minutes. I need to erase the call records before he comes out and return everything to its original state. Five, I don't have time to banter. I'm not in the mood. The phone line fell silent. Xiao Wu remained silent for over ten seconds before he spoke, you want to find a USB drive in his study. It contains evidence of Fu's money laundering for Danua, as well as records and the whereabouts of the funds related to Fu's investments and humanitarian projects in Southeast Asia. Everything that's tied to Danyue is in there. He Yan's voice remained steady as she asked, Are you sure it's in his study? Is it physical or electronic? It's a USB drive, and it should be in the study because I've checked his office, Xiao Wu answered. He then paused briefly to give a warning, Be cautious, there may be surveillance equipment in his study. And once I find it, what do I do next? He Yan inquired. Xiao Wu replied, it's better if you give it to me, and for your own safety, make a copy and don't touch the original. He Yen pursed her lips and asked her final question, who are you? Small Five listened with a smile and replied, it's better if you don't know too much, before promptly ending the call. When Fu Xinxing emerged from the bathroom, Yen was already sitting on the bed, and their love quarrel promptly resumed. After their exchange, Yen inquired, I just finished the last book, can you lend me another one? Fu Xinxing replied, let's go, and next time, don't ask, just take it. As they entered the study, Yen turned her head and cast an indignant and suspicious glance at a small black ornament on the flower rack next to the table. She exclaimed, Chen Jijia, do you want to record this kind of thing? Fu Xinxing glanced in the direction of her eyes and explained, it's a device to avoid being overheard, not a camera. Still somewhat skeptical, Yen said, don't come near me, I don't want any hidden cameras around. She reclined on the sofa, sighed, and requested, I'm so tired, I need some water. Fu Xinxing got up, 
revealing a hidden mini-fridge beside the sofa. Yen was a bit surprised to find a concealed fridge in the study, pondering where he might have hidden an important USB in such an eye-catching location. While sipping her water, Yen pondered that if the study was his most private place, it might contain a secret door. She had to find it. He Yen made several attempts to investigate the study in search of the evidence but came up empty-handed. One day, Yen was walking past the study and overheard voices coming from inside. She attempted to eavesdrop on Fu Xinxing but was noticed by a maid. Consequently, A Jiang opened the study door and invited Yen in. Fu Xinxing looked at her and inquired, How much did you hear? He Yen sat down beside him and coldly asked, Who are you looking for? What do you need to hide from me? Fu Xinxing replied, I'm looking for Chen Hegua. Yen sneered slightly, looking for her, going to this much trouble to find Chen Hegua. Why? Fu Xinxing nodded and explained, I'm looking for a fingerprint file that I left in Beijing a long time ago, it's in the Chen family's possession. Fu Xinxing then smiled and added, Yen, I can't help it. The existence of that thing poses a threat to me, and I must eliminate this threat. He confessed, somewhat hesitantly, to tell you the truth, I was involved with her before. Back then, I just wanted to make you jealous, I didn't expect things to get this complicated. He Yen wasn't really angry. While she suspected that Fu Xinxing's involvement with Chen Heguo was more than he let on, as long as he didn't harm her friends, she didn't really care. She responded with a hint of ridicule, since it's your own mess, you can deal with it on your own. The following day, Yen received a phone call at the office. A voice from the other end said, Hello, Miss Yen, I'm Chen Hegua, can you help me? Yen was surprised but replied calmly, Have we suddenly become friends? She added, rather impolitely, I have work to do, and I don't have time to waste on you. Chen Hegua's attitude had softened, and she mentioned, My grandmother said that if you help me, she'll give you what she has. Hearing this, He Yen suddenly recalled the photocopy of the fingerprint file mentioned by Fu Xinqing. She had seen it once in the Chen family but had not taken it. Instead, she returned it to Chen's mother for safekeeping. He Yen hesitated for a moment and asked Chen Hegua, Where are you? I'll bring cash. When He Yen met Chen Hegua, she had already been waiting. Yen handed her a bundle of 50,000 yen and asked, Is this enough? Chen Hegua hurriedly confirmed, and then she looked up at Yen and said, what you want is at my grandmother's place. You can arrange a meeting with her, and she will give you what you need. He Yen nodded slightly and didn't ask whether she should go or not, but merely looked at her before turning to leave. Chen Hegua suddenly stopped her and inquired, Aren't you curious why things turned out this way? Yen replied nonchalantly, I don't care and am not curious. Chen Hegua chuckled and sighed, Miss Yen, you are so kind. No wonder he loves you so much. I finally understand what he said. You are the only light in his life. He Yen couldn't help but show a trace of disdain. She asked, don't you hate him at all? Chen Hegua hesitated for a moment, her eyes dimmed, and she softly replied, I do hate him. So, when I have the means, I'll come back to get my revenge. He Yen found these words naive and somewhat childish, yet also quite strong and full of vitality. She thought that perhaps her confusion was a result of her youth, and in a few years, she might no longer be this way. Chen Hegua suddenly took out a mobile phone from her backpack and handed it to He Yen. She bit her lip and said, Could you help me return this phone to him? I've never wanted his money, never asked him to buy me expensive items, just this mobile phone, which he gave me as compensation when you dropped my phone. I want to return it to him. He Yen accepted the mobile phone and agreed, OK. Chen Hegua turned away and left. However, as she was crossing the road, a speeding car struck her, sending her flying through the air. Hearing the loud thud, He Yen turned to see what had happened, her heart filled with trepidation and confusion. She was stunned for a moment and then reacted. She turned and ran toward the path where Chen Hegua had been struck. Under the dim street lamp, she found Chen Hegua lying in a pool of blood, still slightly twitching. He Yen panicked and knelt beside her. Chen Hegua was partially conscious and held He Yan's hand as she asked with difficulty, Miss Yen, am I going to die? He Yen tried to reassure her, no, you're not going to die, your teacher will call an ambulance. While Yen was calling an ambulance, Chen Hegua held Yan's hand tightly and raised her head with all her might. She spoke urgently, I don't want to coerce him with my child, really, he said he doesn't want to tell you. I just can't bear the child, and I want to escape and give birth to it on my own, why did he do this to me? I love him so much, I really do. He Yen stared at her, her eyes slightly stiff, her heart heavy with a cold dread. She didn't know how to respond to the young girl in front of her. The ambulance arrived promptly, 
and Chen Hagua was rushed into the emergency room at the hospital. After the necessary procedures, a doctor emerged and said, We're sorry, but we'll need to notify her family. He Yen remained unresponsive, merely turning her head to look at Chen Hagua on the stretcher inside the emergency room. He Yen couldn't recall how they eventually managed to pry her hand from Chen Hagua's, or how she left the hospital building. When Fu Xinxing searched for her in other places, she was still sitting there, unresponsive. He was somewhat alarmed, called her name nervously, Yen, Yen. He Yen slowly raised her head, her eyes frozen, locked onto his face. Fu Xinxing gritted his teeth and spoke in a deep voice, Ah Yen, please listen to me. A sharp smack cut him off as her right hand struck his face without warning. He gazed at her and reluctantly said, Only once, before we left for Southeast Asia, I was angry with you and left to drink. Again, a resounding smack as he Yen slapped him hard across the face. Her hands were still stained with blood. Blood began seeping from Fu Xinxing's lips, but he simply chuckled. I ran into her by chance. As he Yen raised her hand to strike again, Fu Xinxing caught her wrist. He held it with both hands and grinned at her. If you don't stop, you'll hurt yourself. He Yan's trembling lips produced an out-of-tune voice as she hissed, She's so young, and you're a beast. I don't want her to give birth to my child. He gazed at her and declared, Ah Yen, I only want your child. I want the baby you give me, and that's all I want in this world. I give you a baby, you want me to have a baby for you. She chuckled lowly, a laugh that didn't stop until tears welled up in her eyes. After a brief pause, she ceased laughing and stared at him coldly. Her words were icy and unforgiving, Shen Jijia, you can dream, you killed your own son. You're not worthy of being a parent, never worthy, I won't give you a child, if I do, it will be nothing but a corpse and two lives. Suddenly, Fu Xinxing spoke softly, you're a week late, Ah Yen, you must feel it, don't you? We have a child, we have our child together, he's here. He Yan's heart continued to plummet, as if she were descending into a never-ending abyss with no apparent bottom. Shen Jijia, have you lost your mind? My menstrual cycle is always irregular. If it's just a few days late, I could be pregnant. Fu Xinxing didn't argue with her, he simply held her hands and said, get in the car. Whether or not we have a child, this isn't the place for you. She gradually struggled and said in a cold voice, let me go, I'll sit by myself. Once they were seated in the car, Fu Xinxing spoke solemnly, Yan, don't make a fool of yourself, I want this child. I don't have a child here. She attempted to suppress the panic within her and challenged him with a cold demeanor. You have a child with Chen Hegua, and you've just killed him. Ignoring her sarcasm, he continued, even if there's no child now, there will be one in the future. After a pause, he added, Yan, whether you believe it or not, I didn't want to kill Chen Hegua. Her death was an accident. Unexpectedly, Yen grew calm and looked out of the car in silence. Her heart was consumed by an uncontrollable sense of panic. If what Fu Xinxing had just said was true, she couldn't even fathom what her future might look like. It seemed that giving birth to his child might be the lesser of two evils, 